This video is brought to you by PHP Storm. I'm somebody who doesn't like waiting, and to that end, I always try to purchase the fastest computer that I possibly can. However, desktops and large laptops aren't always the easiest thing to travel with or the best thing to sit in front of the TV with. So I love small and light laptops. My latest laptop is fine for web browsing and writing, but when I fire up Docker on it, that's all I can do. Thankfully, PHP Storm provides a way for us to use our more powerful machines to host our development work while running PHP Storm locally on a less powerful computer. In this video, we'll discuss how to set up PHP Storm to allow us to perform remote development using SSH. Hello developers, and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. So as a recent convert to PHP Storm, it's amazing how many tools it provides right out of the box. And one of those tools is the ability to use a remote computer using SSH or JetBrains to do the development work. In this mode, everything is actually running on the remote computer, and we just have a very thin client running locally that looks identical to PHP Storm. I should mention before we get too much further that this is a beta release. And as it's a beta release, you can expect some quirkiness. I have a problem with non-responsive dialogue screens occasionally, but it works well enough to do basic development work. Let's jump over to my computer to see how it's done. So the first thing that we need is a place to house our development environment. And for that, I'm actually going to use DigitalOcean. And I'm already logged into my account here. I'm just going to click this Create Droplet button. And it's going to ask me what I want to do for my droplet. So I'm going to pick New York to make it as close to me as humanly possible. And then down here, I'm going to pick Ubuntu with the current version of the long-term support, which is 2204. And then we just need a basic plan. Coming down to the memory options, you do need to pick eight gigabytes. There's a four gigabyte requirement for PHP Storm to run remotely or it won't even install. I used it with four gigabytes when I was testing and then it quickly ran out of memory. So you do want to pick this eight gigabyte version. It is kind of pricey at $56 a month. So keep that in mind that you don't want to really want this running for all the time. I'm going to come down here. I already have my SSH key installed. So I'm going to use my MacBook Air. And then I'm not worried about any of these options. I don't need managed databases or backups or anything right now. Or right, I'm going to give it the default host name and everything. I'm going to click Create Droplet. And then we're going to wait for that to spin up. Now that that's spun up, we have this IP address here. I'm just going to click this copy button to get it over into my clipboard. And then I'm going to switch over to my terminal. And I'm going to do SSH root and then that IP address. And this is the first time we've connected to this host. So it's wondering if it's OK. And I'm going to say, yes, it is. And then we're inside of our server. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn on the firewall because we don't want anyone accessing this information. So we're going to do UFW default allow outgoing. We want the server to be able to access anything outside of it. And then we want to do UFW default deny incoming. Now we're going to enable SSH. We're going to do UFW allow SSH and then UFW allow HTTP, because those are the two protocols that we're going to want to connect to it. And then we're going to do UFW enable to enable the firewall. And hopefully we won't lose our, our access to the, to the server here. And we're going to say yes. And everything seems to be working fine. If I do another SSH connection, I can get in. So it looks like we're in good shape. So now we need to install Docker and Docker Compose. We're going to do apt install yes automatically docker.io and docker compose now we need to set up our laravel environment area and to do that we're going to use the command line that they give us on the website but we're only going to download mysql and we're going to call it our awesome project and then we're going to do with MySQL, because that's all we need is MySQL for this project. And we're going to do bash into that into bash. And this is going to download everything it needs in order to, to set up our project. So that's completed. And we can tell with our, our command here that we can do cd our awesome project. Before we do anything else, we need to quickly fix the permissions for this file. So we're going to do ch 
mod seven 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 dash recursive on everything. Then we're gonna do vendor bin sale up to get those containers started. And if we go back over into our web browser, we can go to our IP address and we should get that Laravel start page, which we do. So now that we have a basic environment set up, we're ready to start setting up PHP Storm. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up PHP Storm and go down to Revo Remote Development and then SSH, and then we're gonna click on New Project. And it's gonna ask, ask us what connection we want. It's a new connection. Our username for this project is root, and the host name is that IP address that we had before. And I'm gonna hit the Enter key so it'll check the connection. And so now it's uploading the binary to the server so that it can start prepping things for us. And so it's, it's finding PHP Storm is installed there now, and our project directory is home, our awesome project. And then I'm gonna hit enter again. And it's actually gonna start the JetBrains gateway, which is actually what's gonna allow us to, to edit. PHP Storm has had a chance to load up on the remote server and it's loaded here with the JetBrains client. We can kind of see what we're working with. And there's, there's a couple differences between this and what you would normally see. Up here in the upper left hand corners is the host that we are connected to. If we click on this, we can see information about the host. So we are currently like at three and a half percent CPU load. Our memory is at 43% and our disk is at 3.9%. It also has some things in here like um, backend latency, um, which is just how long it takes for us to type something here and for it to, to go back and forth. Um, and then again, like username, host name, that kind of stuff. And then down here in the lower right hand corner, we can see how much data transfer is actually occurring. As we click on things, move around in our project, that, that amount will change. So we can go into our resources and views and the welcome blade. And so we could change this to testing, testing site, and we can save it. And then we can go back over to Chrome. And if we refresh, we'll see it's changed to testing site. So it's really just that fast. If we click on this terminal, this terminal is actually, again, on a remote server and not local. So, so we can interact with things as if they were local to the server, right? So that's, this is on that, that um, drop it we built. When it's time to close the application, we're just gonna close the project here. And we're gonna get this thing and it's gonna ask us if we wanna stop the backend or keep it running. If we click close and stop, it's it's going to also stop the IDE backend that it installed on our remote server. But we can also click close and keep running if we wanna little make the speed the startup a little bit faster next time. I am gonna click close and stop because I'm not gonna need it. Then the next time that we wanna restart that project, we're gonna click in this SSH again and it actually is listing that project so we can click on that again and it'll launch it again so that is how you set up a remote laravel environment and develop it locally using php storm i hope you enjoyed our video if so make sure you subscribe comment share and like as it does help others find us did you use this video to set up a remote development environment if so send me a message on twitter or phpc.social at scottkeckwarren or drop me a message in the comment section below it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.